Boo bitches! Welcome to episode 79 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm River. I'm Ren. And today we're going to be talking about deja vu. We've, we've kind of been thinking about this topic since we did our intention episode because it came up and we were like, ooh, and mm-hmm, what really mm-hmm. wanted to go down that rabbit hole, but we didn't yeah. have time in that episode. Yeah. So we we really wanted to get deeper into this one. But first, you know, the more most important thing, what are we drinking? <laughs> most important <laughs> wow this week's cocktail is a little bit different for Ren and I uh, I'm honestly not quite sure how I feel about it so I, we're really working hard on our cocktail book we're hoping to get it published this year and mm-hmm. we need more whiskey drinks and the reason we need more whiskey drinks is because neither Ren nor I like whiskey so it's yeah, been no, but... one that we not really wanted to test. But this one is interesting. I don't know how I feel about it, but I think a whiskey like a lover might like it. Mm-hmm. Um when my husband comes home, I'll have to have him test it, but it is called the Witch's Broom, B R O O M, not brew, B R E W, <laughs> which is broom. And it is a mixture of whiskey, Campari, vermouth, espresso, chocolate bitters, those candied orange rinds that I love so much, and then a splash of Coke, which kind of is the ingredient, I think, that smooths it all out. Mm -hmm. And I I guess if you're a Diet Coke fan, that might work too. But uh, you guys should try it and see what you think and then tell us if it's good or not. Mine is more candied orange than... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sh- neither of it's really hard for us with whiskey. But honestly, it's okay. You know, you could tweak it to, you know, your own liking. Oh, I don't like that much whiskey, so I added a little bit more espresso, whatever, right? Me too. I like so, the espresso more. And it's not too chocolate bad. Chocolate bitters, I'm wondering if we could swap that out with maybe chocolate vodka, but then it would be super strong. Super strong. So, you know, and I don't know how vodka and whiskey would drink, but we're we're still working on this one, but mm-hmm. um, it's very strong. So <laughs> forgive us, please. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So deja vu. Well, what is it? There are all kinds of definitions about um, deja vu and theories about them. Some interesting, interesting theories. So deja vu is French for some, that means already seen. And mm-hmm. it is that eerie feeling of familiarity that you get when you feel like you've been here before. Okay. You know, most of us at, at least once in our lives experience this. And I have many, many times just not. I mean, I wouldn't say often, but I have before. Have you? I feel like I get that moment often. Do you get it often? I have a friend who gets it all the time. It's not like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, yeah, it's deja vu. Like, oh, I've already done this before. But it's it's also the feeling of that's supposed to happen. You know, like, like. I'm supposed to be here in this moment viewing this scene, whatever I'm staring at, I'm supposed to be viewing that right now. And then the world feels right because I know I'm on my right okay, path. Okay, so that, that that's actually one of the theories, the right path theory. Mm-hmm. It, that is an actual theory about what deja vu is. Yeah, um, and I, I, is... Get, I get that feeling a lot, like a lot, I would say on a weekly basis. There was one rich witch. Wow. Okay. So see, we've been testing these <laughs> drinks try, and, and we didn't like it. So we're like, well, let's add more of this. And so pretty tipsy. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I was going to say now. <laughs> something um, about something a witch that I was reading about said about uh, deja vu, but I don't know what it was. I said, what did I say? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to move on. Okay. okay. Maybe it'll come to me and I will mm-hmm. tell you all. Okay. Um, it is defined as that feeling of having already experienced that present situation. Mm-hmm. It is the opposite of jamais vu, which oh. is the coolest thing. I was like, I, I had no idea about this. It means never seen. And that's when you're in a familiar situation that is not recognized by the observer. I know this one. I have had this one before. Well, Me I've too. had deja vu too, but I never knew there was a term for this. And it's Me like, neither. 
where suddenly I feel like I'm, I'm in somewhere that I always go. And yet suddenly I feel like I have never been here before. I get this adrenaline rush, this fear, because for a minute, I don't know why I'm here. Yeah. And it's the opposite. Oh, bless you. She sneezed. You. But she I muted it. it. <laughs> um, Try not I, to disrupt River. <laughs> I have this more than I have deja vu. That feeling oh. of, of fear where I'm like, where am I? Why am I here? How did I get here? When I'm in a totally familiar, you know, it could be at home. It could be in our bathroom. And all of a sudden I'm like, mm-hmm. why am I here? Where did I, how did this happen? It's the weirdest feeling. Huh, I've never had it like that. Like the feeling that you're describing. I just, okay. I guess I'm on the idea that deja vu or whatever the feeling I'm feeling where I'm like, yes, this is right. And whenever I have a feeling where I'm like, mm, this feels funny, this feels unfamiliar. This doesn't feel right. I never see it as like, oh, where am I? I don't know what's going on. It's not type scary of, to you. No, it's just kind of like a, oh, this is unfamiliar and I'm not on the right track of where I'm supposed to be. It's outright fear for me. Like, how did I get here? Why am I here? And then, you know, it, it passes in an instant, but, and then I'm like, what, what was that? It, it's very, very strange. Hmm. So okay. jamais, jamais vu. I had no idea. Okay. Um, it's described, deja vu is described as the feeling when you're in the middle of a conversation with a friend and you suddenly feel like it's familiar or perhaps you visit a place that, you know, you're going there for the first time, but you find yourself thinking, I've been here before. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever the details of that weird, eerie moment is, you know it when you feel it. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody has had it. I, I I, think, I guarantee all of our listeners have had this feeling before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Merriam-Webster Dictionary dis- defines it as a feeling of having already experienced the present situation. But, okay, but if it's already experienced the present situation, it's not the present then. There are lots of theories, which we'll get into. I have theories. (laughs) Well, I'm sure, well, hopefully all of the ones I came up with, you will have input on. According to recent research, at least 79% of the population claims to have had a deja vu experience at least once in their lifetime. Okay. It it supposedly generally affects people aged 15 to 25. Oh, why only I've, I'm older than 25 and I have I still have it. So I, but I don't know, that's apparently the people who when you do, you know, how how do they research this stuff? You know, I don't know. So it however they've researched it to come up with the 79% of the population also came up with the ages of 15 to 25 as being the most common times that this happens. Okay. It happens at a random, at random times and only lasts for a few seconds. Could last for longer than that. The friend I was telling you about, she, Mm -hmm. she goes on for minutes and she'll be like, okay, and now this is going to happen. And it does. And then she's like, okay, and now this is going to happen. And it does. I think you might know my, my friend. Well, I'll talk to you about her later, but most people say that a strange sensation takes them over and they realize then that, okay, this is what everybody's talking about as deja vu. Okay. So it's obviously common, Mm -hmm. obviously so common that there's an actual word for it. Yeah. But, 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 but what is it? Mm -hmm. So Let's get into the theories. These are, and there are so many more. We could make this probably a three hour episode. We will try not to do that to you. Oh, I didn't start, (laughs) start the time. I need to write that down. Um, So the first theory is that it's past lives. So the past lives theory speculates that deja vu is a memory leaking in from a past life. Mm -hmm. So according to hypnotist Eli and I don't know how to pronounce his name, Blilius, I guess. He Unless says, it's French, then it would be Billoui. It could be Billoui. It could be oh. Billoui. I'm yeah. no I, you know, you and I are weirdos <laughs> because I, I have not met anybody else besides you in recent history that has taken French like I did. I most took French. Take, most people take Spanish or whatever. I took Latin yeah. and French. I took uh, French and one Mm -hmm. of my family members, she speaks Spanish, you know, she's 
an mm -hmm. aunt on, you know, you know, she's my aunt and she speaks Spanish. And, uh, she, when I told her, I was like, oh, I'm going to start studying French. She was like, why not Spanish? We could have conversations in Spanish. I was like, because if I wanted to learn Spanish, it's everywhere. You know, yeah. I would, I mean, I, I know words here and there, you know, so if I, I, I wanted to, I would be able to quickly immerse myself in that language. Whereas French, I wouldn't be able to. And that's something different. I love the French language to me. I mean, it is one of the romance languages and it mm -hmm. is just a beautiful language to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Russian, my mom actually spoke some Russian and she, it's a very guttural language. Mm -hmm. German, mm -hmm. I think is a very guttural language, mm -hmm. you know, not offense, no offense to anybody out there. I, I mean, I, I think that's fine too, but I just love French. French is very beautiful. I took it for seven years. And do I know how to, do I remember? <laughs> no. Well, it's been a long time <laughs> since I've been in high school and college. So, and I, I remember mean, I more. Active, I was active but, in my French program. You know, I was a part of the French club. I, oh, I wow. went to France. I traveled abroad. <gasps> really? I didn't remember that. Yeah. So I traveled abroad. I mean, I was only there for a week, but still. It was very like cool I, still. And I barely remember the whole experience. So I traveled abroad. So Sometimes I get mixed up because my husband, he's uh, European and he speaks another language. And so mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn more of that language. And that language mm -hmm. is also one of the love languages. And so I'm getting mixed up with a lot of, you know, I need Spanish to make him and French speak. and I need to his native language. Ren's husband speak and have him speak <laughs> his language so, because I want to see if it's beautiful. Like you say, I mean, I bet it is, it's, but he doesn't speak that over here because none of us. Yeah. Speak. It's more in between like the beautiful, like flowiness of French and like it's sort of Italian like is, Russian. Well, I, it's I like think it's, Spanish. What are the Romance languages? I, I don't I know. know. Italian and French and maybe Spanish. They're all they are all very similar. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. So like in my head, when I'm trying to formulate sentences in his native language, I'm like, I'll I'll blurt something out and he's like that was Spanish my language and French all in one and I don't even speak Spanish. So Yeah. which my husband he speaks part he he lived in Spain for a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, I remember. So he is not fluent anymore, but he used to be able to read and write it and speak it pretty well, but now he just can really understand conversations that are going on so he understands some Spanish. He's he worldly. Obviously knows English. Yeah. So it's just like, how do we get on this topic? I what? have no idea. We were talking about deja vu. Oh, my oh Lord. yeah. It's the name. Anyway, oh, I, I studied French for seven years and I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> so Eli, he, he says, <laughs> from a spiritual perspective, deja vu happens when we unconsciously find a person or place familiar due to a past life experience. It is when we feel like we know someone or that we have just met or feel at home in a city that we're visiting for the very first time. That mm -hmm. familiar feeling is often due to a past life experience in this theory. Okay. This happens on an unconscious level where our memories are stored, including past life memories. Okay. And he but, says, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, well, I love you going down the rabbit hole. Okay. I think that's what's going to make this interesting. I think it's, I think this one is very interesting. I necessarily, I, my personal opinion, I necessarily don't think that deja vu pertains to past memories and past feelings. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in that deja vu moment, every single thing down to the speck of dust on the table is where it's supposed to be. Right. And what happens. And I always think this, and I think it's not normal to think this. You're not but, normal. No. And so every single... But, but we love you. It's okay. Yeah. Every single thing that happens in this world can never happen again. Right? So it can get very close, like a, a cloud formation, the mm -hmm. speck of dust on the table. Yes, your table can get dusty again. And yes, the clouds will form more formations, but it will never be exactly right down to the T in that particle the same ever again. Isn't that, don't they say that about snowflakes too? There is never, uh -huh. there's never a snowflake, a snowflake that is ever the same. That will ever be identical. Mm -hmm. And so I think about that a lot. And so my problem with this 
this form theory. Mm-hmm. of theory is that when or at least when I have deja vu moments, it's like everything in that in that instant is right or is supposed to happen or is like, you know, or, you know, that familiarity. And so I wonder if you're going to connect with some of these other theories that I'm going to talk about. Maybe. But when, I'm so curious when they to say hear your there thoughts. are memories like that are stored in our past life, I believe in reincarnation. And so if you're feeling familiar in a space, like I feel so at home and comfortable in the mountains. Mm-hmm. That is just like, it's such a comfort for me. I know that's where, I mean, maybe a past life. That's what I, I was going to ask. Something. You think it was a past life. It's so comfortable. But I don't think that deja vu really pertains to our past lives because of how at least I have deja vu. Because now, I'm not your, trying to discount anybody who has your deja, deja vu, vu that's is, different than mine. Is 100% accurate. It's not just similar. It's like yeah. 100% yeah. accurate. Okay. It's like down to like what's playing on the TV, which is could be SpongeBob or whatever, which, yeah, I, you, you can tell my generation by I know. what I I'm play like, in the yeah. background. Yeah, I posted but, something on Facebook with SpongeBob and I'm like, yeah, they can tell how old I am. <laughs> yeah, no, but honestly, like, and so that SpongeBob episode playing in that exact very moment where that book is laying on the table and I have a drink in my hand, like that never is going to, is never going to happen again. You know, so you, I'll be curious to see what you think about the parallel universe uh, theory, okay. which I get to later. It's later. I can talk a lot about the later. Parallel. I know later. I can talk a lot about the parallel universe thing. OK. OK. So there are many anecdotal stories uh, about people that have deepened their deja vu experiences through past life regression therapy. You've all okay. heard of past life regression, I, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's a hypnotic. Well, a hip hypnosis session that helps you access your past life memories. So have you ever heard someone say, and you say this, so have you ever heard someone say that they feel like they were born in the wrong era? <laughs> yeah, I do say that. <laughs> Rin, Rin says this all the time. She I is a born, 70s child. I should have been born in like the 60s or so, or maybe okay, the 60s. 50s. Yeah. And then grown no, not up in the fifties, they were no, too no, but like then. Bro- grown up in my twenties in the seventies. If maybe that makes sense. so, I should yeah, have yeah, gone yeah. through the seventies in my twenties. Mm-hmm. So, so sometimes when we feel very strongly about a certain time period, some psychologists interpret that as a possible sign of being connected to a former life. So okay. you may have had a former life in well. I've 70s. done, I've done a former life, like a, a re- did you, did you sleep? do a past life regression? Yeah. You went to a hypnotist? No, no, no. By myself, but oh. through, through my own education and through what I needed to travel to in my brain to do that. How cool is that? And my I'm name was Caroline. i scared to do that. <laughs> Your remember- name was Caroline. That is a very seventies name. I remember my name was Caroline and people called me Carol and Hmm. I don't remember what I look like, but I know how I died. (laughs) How did you die? My husband pushed me down the stairs. (gasps) (laughs) You've never told me this. I have told you this. No, you have not. We have been friends for years and you've not ever told me this story. I have told you this. Uh, No. I have told you this, and I had three kids or so. I think it was three. It was either oh two or three. God. And they're probably still alive today. <laughs> yeah, they would be. Oh, but my yeah, God. That's based no, on what I did I by myself. Now, I want to go back to my that. Egypt time. I would I would have so much fun in my Egypt time. But no, I've got, I got my earlier regression, which I you know don't know. What? We should I don't go know and, what time frame it was. We should find a hypnotist. To do th- to do past life regression with us and record it for our oh, listeners. That would be interesting. What an interesting episode that would be. It would be. It would be. Well, very... you all tell us if you think it. W- we think it would be, but I don't know that uh-huh, you all. Uh huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it so, was very enlightening. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you ever get a strong feeling that you've been somewhere before but have no actual memory of it? Do you find 
do you ever find yourself saying things that you could swear you've already said before, but you never have? Yeah. And if so, the psychologists think that you might be connecting to a previous incarnation of your soul, which okay. you believe in reincarnation. So, yeah. Okay. So here's a story. I found a story on this theory, which is the past life theory. Okay. Way back in the 70s, I decided to take a break from working in London. I had always wanted to travel, and through my New Zealand flatmates, who I was sharing a home with at the time, the opportunity to work as a, quote, super cook, end quote, for Contiki Travel came up. We arrived for a five-day stop in Florence, and the courier said that he would walk me there to the food market. We walked across the main square, and there in front of me were these a myriad of little streets. I turned to the courier and said, it's okay, I know where I am. And I led him up the right streets, through another, and so on for quite a while, lefts and rights and all of that. Then there in front of me was the magnificent Florence food market that had stood there. It's been there for many centuries. Ooh, wow. What happened next was even more exciting. For a few seconds, there in front of me was a scene from... 16th century people dressed that way, bustling in the about in the filthy streets, the carcasses hanging in the doorways, el- animals everywhere, and I seemed stuck to the spot. As fast as it happened, my vision cleared and I was back in the 70s. The courier turned to me and said, "How did you know where to go if you haven't been here before? And are you okay cuz you went as white as a sheet?" Oh wow. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that is, I would think, deja vu. And I would think that that is a sample of a past life. Obviously, he had seen it before in a past yeah. life. But yeah. like like you said, it wasn't 100%, you know, every dust spot in its mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. It was a mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah. It yeah. was a feeling that he had been there. So I wonder if if there's a difference, different types of deja vu, maybe. Probably. Probably. Another past life story. This one says, when I was about five years old, we went on holiday to the Isle of Wight, W-I-G-H-T. My parents took my sister and I out for a a day to Carisbrook Castle, as well as many other things. It was mainly known from 1660 as a prison for important royalists. Mm -hmm. The most notable of these was Charles I, who was there from 1647 to 1648. Of course, he was housed with some ceremony with members of his own household looking after him, that kind of thing. I, of course, as a five-year-old, was more interested in seeing the famous donkeys that lived there (laughs) and playing in the tower. As we crossed over the drawbridge, I saw an amazing scene playing out in front of my eyes. I thought maybe it was being acted out by actors. Court jesters, food was being prepared, wash washing was hanging from the windows, and the smells of rotting food and animal poo. The scene was so incredibly real. I remember thinking how I wasn't at all afraid and how I wanted to join in. I was brought back to the present by my mother telling me to stop dawdling and to stop scuffing my shoes. Hmm. So possibly past life, he had been there. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, it wasn't a scene where it was all 100% identical. It wasn't a premonition. Um, it was. No, but. He felt like I, he had been there before. No, I know you're going to get into the parallel universe thing, but if there's parallel universes and somehow that one shifted really quickly for an instant of a second into ours and, or if we want to get into timelines, time is very, it's not. I mean, you see time is linear, but technically it's not, you know. Einstein said. Okay. So. I said, okay. (laughs) We are getting into all of that, girl. (laughs) Okay. So the next one is parallel universe. This is the parallel, uh, the basic theory of the parallel universe. Believers in this theory claim that the human experience of deja vu can be explained by considering the unsettling feeling of having lived a moment before as a crossover with a parallel universe. This would mean that whatever you're doing while experiencing deja vu, a parallel version of you is doing that in a different universe simultaneously, therefore creating an alignment between the two universes. Okay. Okay. Now, there is more science to this, which I know that you are all about the science. So Mm -hmm. 
Some physicists believe that the multiverse exists in our reality, in our home, in our workplace, in our rooms, all around us, all the time. Dr. Kakao, Kaku, I guess is his name, K-A-K-U. He is an Amer- American physicist, and he is an expert in the string field theory, which is way over my head, but you know what that is because you mm-hmm. started off in astrology. So mm-hmm. um, you're Astrology? More... Are you kidding astronomy? me? Astronomy. I'm sorry. You always do this. I know. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> I I wish <laughs> that we have degrees in astrology. <laughs> I suppose. He says no. No, River, we don't. I would rather have astronomy. <laughs> well, astrology is cool, too. And we talked that about it in cool. one episode. We need to do more episodes more. on astrology. Yes. yes. Okay. Back back to Dr. Kaku. So he revealed the possible causes of deja vu. He said there is a possibility that deja vu is caused by the ability to change between different universes, which okay. is what you were talking about. The idea is that there are other universe, this multiverse theory, which Mm -hmm. sounds so much like a Marvel comic book, but it's a real thing that they talk about. It is the the theory that there are multiple universes, hence the multiverse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has been supported by several scientists, including theoretical physicist and Nobel Prize winner Steven Weinberg. So it's not just... This person actually won a prize, a Nobel Prize. So it's not just, you know, oh, you're the crazy people that think this. It's somebody who actually knows stuff. (laughs) Uh Oh, wow. So we're not people that know stuff. Well, I'm certainly not. You are, but (laughs) not me. Okay. So Professor Weinberg compared the theory of multiple universes with radio signals. And this is where you're going to probably get this because- are the scientists. Around us, there are hundreds of different radio waves emitted from distant antennas. Our office, our car, our living room are all filled with these radio waves right right now as we speak. Mm-hmm. Yep. H- however, a radio can only receive one frequency at a time. The other, other frequencies will continue and they'll be there, but you won't hear them until you tune them in. Mm-hmm. Each antenna has a different power and a different frequency. As a result, our radio can only tune in to one broadcast at a time. I mean, and think about tuning your radio to try to find, well, we press buttons nowadays, but, you know, to try to find the frequency that's not the just station, static. Yeah, yeah you mm-hmm. turn it in, you tune into a station. Mm-hmm. In the same way, our universe In our universe, we are tuned to the frequency that corresponds with our physical reality. Mm -hmm. However, there are an infinite number of parallel universes that coexist in the same room, same time, same place as we do, but we can't tune them. We can't, we aren't tuned into them because they're Mm -hmm. not on our frequency. Mm -hmm. They vibrate at different frequencies and these universes could be all around us and we don't even though they're there. However, it is possible that for a certain moment, two frequencies could be, quote, in in phase, end quote, allowing for the universes to interact for a short amount of time with each other. And Mm -hmm. this is what Dr. Kaku theorizes could explain deja vu. At times, we would be able to tune in to these different dimensions And that feeling of having lived that moment before would really correspond to one of our other lives in the parallel universe. Mm -hmm. So if this theory of parallel universes and deja vu is correct, then we start thinking about, well, what reality do we see? You know, how is our life in the other dimensions? Each person in a universe has a counterpart theoretically, in another universe with the same name, ancestry, appearances, possibly even the same job. But are they us or are they Mm -hmm. different than us? Do they have different personalities? Do they have the exact same personalities that we do? I like to think about this a lot. (laughs) I do too. There are categorically two classes of parallel universes that I came across in my research. Number one is the the divergent universe. 
And that's where our our reality mm-hmm. shares a common history with other realities up to a point of divergence. I like and, that one. I think about this one a lot. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, as the result of something happening in one universe or the other, their histories then split from that point. And, you know, they're increasingly different at that point. There was a series I just watched that talked about, I wish I had remembered that when I was doing this research. I don't even know what, whether it was, because we have Peacock and Paramount and Netflix and Prime. I don't even know which one of those it was on, but it was, it was a very cool theory where in the future they consider one reality the real reality and these Hmm. divergences are just fake realities alternate realities that and so they would experiment on these people and these other because they're not real people because our history is the real one Mm -hmm. and so once this stub or whatever it was called i think it was called a stub happened those people were free game for experimentation and that kind of thing Hmm. Very, very interesting. But that is this divergent universe. So we share histories up to a point and then something happens and then it branches off from there. Mm -hmm. The second Mm -hmm. type is where we stay similar all along, just with minor differences. So, you know, generally there are differences between the universes, like maybe you're in the shower and you grab the soap. Before you wash your hair, you wash your body. Whereas in the other one, you wash your hair before you wash your body. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps you grab two potato chips in one reality, but only one in another. Or you chose a glass of wine instead of champagne, but very, very similar, but not identical. Mm-hmm. Which in your definition of deja vu, it's identical. I had, I kind of have like a mishmash of these. So... Mm-hmm. It's on deja vu, but not at the same time. So if we're going to be talking about parallel universes, I don't know where deja vu would come in with what I kind of believe. So like, I'm part the divergent universe, you know, where you are, you have a common history up until a point and it splits off, right? I mean, think about all the choices that we make every day. There could be divergences throughout our exactly our own personal history if i had done this instead of this if i had married this instead of this yeah. yeah so i believe that but i also think it's kind of intertwined with the subtleness like if i pick up my drink right now and take a sip that could also lead to a huge divergence and like you know just wouldn't even know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or if like you take a bite of a cheeseburger instead of a piece of pizza you know mm-hmm. it's i think it's both where it could be a any decision we make could be a lot like a big change or it could just be subtle, you know, like that. But as to deja vu, you've never had one that's similar. It's always been a hundred percent accurate. So you're yeah. more like the premonition theory, probably. Yeah. It's kind of like a I like parallel like the the idea of parallel universes and how they how they could work, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to my deja vu, it's more like consistent and like exactly like if one overlaps the other and we're both having that same moment at that same time where everything's the same and then it stops being the same again because of some small minute change. Yeah, the the, the theory that people have about deja vu and the parallel universes is, is that, you know, we have these little differences where we Mm -hmm. pick up the soap instead of the shampoo, we eat the pizza instead of the Mm -hmm. hamburger. Mm -hmm. But deja vu is when shortly for a small period of time, you're 100% Mm -hmm. doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're in total sync for a minute. Mm -hmm. And this results in the universe is overlapping and you feel as if you just, just did something because you actually did do it in another universe. Mm hmm. So this brand brings me to the Mandela effect, which I love the Mandela effect. We can talk for hours just on it, but we're going to try to keep it short because I've got a lot more theories to go through. Okay. Okay. Explain the Mandela effect. And then I have a story of a Mandela effect that happened to my husband two days ago, one day ago. Really? 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 Uh Okay. Uh So the Mandela effect is a popular and heavily debated type of quote, false memory. 
that's what they try to say that the Mandela effect is, is a false mm-hmm. memory. Mm-hmm. It refers to the situation in which many people think that an event occurred when it did not, mm-hmm. according to some people. I, mm. But the it might Mand- be their truth. It you know? might be their truth. Okay, so the Mandela effect theory is the phenomenon of remembering something different than what it is presented as right now. Mm-hmm. And I need to go get another drink. I am back. Okay. I went upstairs um, and my husband said, I told him we were at the part where I, we were talking about the parallel universes. Mm-hmm. And he said, maybe it's a parallel universe without alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that would be a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you were going to tell us about your husband's Mandela experience. Yes. So it was like literally, I think two nights ago, last night, maybe last night. And he was looking on his phone. He's on TikTok. And people were posting about this, a video game that he used to play when he was younger. And he was like, oh my gosh, it was the good days. I would wake up early before school and play a little bit with like, you know, his friends online and everything. And it's Call of Duty. And apparently this, a video was posted, like somebody was going through the old uh, Call of Duty games and they were running through it. And there was a sign, like a, like a part of the graphics, like a, like a street sign, you know, because they were Mm -hmm. in the street that apparently was never there before. Oh. And my husband, he was like, it wasn't there. I know it wasn't because I, I threw, you know, like grenades and stuff over the wall that it was by you know like he was like i remember like hiding out there and throwing grenades over to get people and if there was a sign there that would stop me from doing that yeah and so i was like that's a mandela effect and he was like it's so weird like some people are saying that it's never been there and some people are saying that it's been there all the time and he's like it's never been there i remember playing See, that's the parallel universe thing. And one of the mm-hmm. theories about what caused this split, like like somehow we join other, we, we move from one universe to another mm-hmm. is what that is. And one of the theories is that that CERN building, C-E-R-N, I don't know if you're supposed to call it the C-E-R-N building or if it's pronounced CERN or Kern, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's that European research center where they do the atom thing where they, yeah, yeah. what is it called? It's like they caught that supposedly when they fired it up, oh, it's the um, Hadron Collider. Mm-hmm. And they did it in 2008 was, I think, the first time that they did it to try to split an atom. And that is when a lot of these um, Mandela effect things started to happen. So the theory yeah. is that somehow we crossed into each other's universes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. are now stuck there. Yeah. Yeah. But so, then like, well, like what, what happened to that universe, Ren? You know? Well, I think they, you all just switched places. But it's similar enough that, yeah, I, I don't know. And, you know, so they did that back in 2008 with the Collider. And they just started it up again recently. And something else came up recently after they did that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's another Mandela effect thing. I wonder yeah. if it really is caused by that because, you know, every scientist is like, yeah. there's there's no proof of that. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Um, but examples of the Mandela effect, and I'm sure our listeners know this because we're all weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the Bernstein Bears, which I remember was S-T-E-I-N, was actually the Ber- Berenstein, Berenstein Bears, S-T-A-I-N. See, I don't remember this because that was a book from when I was younger. And so I don't have any recollection of this. Well, what actually caused this to be called the Mandela effect was there is a large number of people that remember Mandela dying in prison in the 80s. Mm -hmm. But in this reality that we're in right now, he didn't die until 2013. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's wild. I don't I even mean, know because I I mean like I was not alive in the 80s. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't even know, you know. Yeah. The Monopoly man doesn't have a monocle. And I swear to God. Yes, he does. That he has a monocle. <laughs> he does. I know he does. But in our reality right now, he does not have a monocle. He does not. But I know he's had one before. <laughs> 
They say that it's uh, the scientists say it's our memories getting confused with Mr. Peanut from the peanut commercials. Planters Mr. Peanut peanuts. wears a monocle. He does. Which I remembered that too, but I remember the guy from Mon- the Monopoly game wearing a yeah, monocle. Yeah, he had a little monocle and it like yep. hang- hung off a little bit. Yeah, and they and say with like a little bit of string. Yep, they say no. He yes, he did. I mean, <laughs> in, in, t- in today's world, he does not. And they yes. say Jif peanut butter was always Jif, not Jiffy. And it yet was there's, Jiffy. There's a lot of people that remember it being Jiffy, and then the Fruit of the Loom logo. There was a cornucopia. I, I swear, swear on it. I swear there was a cornucopia. I remember I that as well. There was a cornucopia. And C-3PO in Star Wars apparently has a silver leg, which I never He's remember. He's never had a But scientists leg. say the reason we think that is because we look at him, most of his body is gold. We Our, our brains assume that he was all gold, but he has a silver leg. Well, and I, I swear I don't remember that. <laughs> uh huh. And then Disney, the Tinkerbell, where she would fly out and dot yeah. the eye. Yeah. And sometimes her wouldn't wand wouldn't work, and she got that yeah, little angry to, face, and she would bang, hit bang, it on bang. her hand. Yeah. Yes. They say that never happened. See, but then how do we all have the same memory of her hitting it on her hand? That is the question. And she did like the little stompy foot and went. Yeah. Were we in a different universe? Because we all remember it very. And scientists are like, no, no, you're just falsely remembering it. I'm like, how do hundreds of people, thousands of people falsely remember the same thing? Listen, scientists are also people. They're just trying to, no, no, it's fine. But in the background, they're like, yeah, yeah, this is real. Mm -hmm. Scientists are just people. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's fascinating. I mean, I swear there was a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo. Oh, yeah. Me too. I remember it 100%. Me too on the little packaging. Yeah. And I and how, how how would all of us remember that when it and didn't it's like, if it didn't it's happen? It's a specific cornucopia looking too. Like you know, yeah, it can we all, can all like, see it. All cornucopias are like can be different. All the graphics can be different, but we all see it the exact same way. So are we now living in someone else's universe? Is your Wren somewhere I hope, else? I hope that Wren's having fun. Because <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, you I have hope, a good life. I hope that Wren is not stressed like I am. She's living the best <laughs> life. Maybe she has man, discovered man. some kind of herb or meditation, med- meditation or medication to help her with her anxiety. She needs to let me know because I'm having a hard <laughs> time over here. That brings me back to mirror the mirror magic. I feel like if there mm-hmm. are, you know, can we see them through a mirror? There was a movie that I, or maybe it was a series that I watched where there was a a mirror in an attic that this group of people, they rented this house and there was a mirror upstairs and it actually was a teleportation into another universe a parallel universe i've been scared out of my mind they used it to go and do things like one of the the people was an artist Mm -hmm. and she went into this other world and her other self had done this magnificent art and so she came back into our world with that art and said it was hers and it kind of was hers. But technically, it's not hers. Right? And so they were all going into this other universe. And, and it was multiple parallel universes. And they would go and steal what they needed and come back to our stagnant point. This mirror was a stagnant point to our our universe mm-hmm. and use it in our, to, to get rich. It was fascinating. I'll have to find that. Maybe yeah, our, it does our sound listeners know it. It was an interesting, interesting story, and I can't remember if it was a movie or a series. Was it I, one of your grade B movies, or was I it watched actually good a lot. It was. I thought it was really good, but I think okay. grade B and C movies are good too. So okay, well, that doesn't an, never. Oh, I found an, I a new <laughs> a new series that I just started watching. The Red Rose series. It's out on Netflix. It's okay. a horror horror. Uh, genre Uh and it's about an app on your phone and I'm very curious about it I just started it so we'll see how that goes but yeah Yeah. I'm a I'm a Netflix junkie or 
Paramount or Peacock or we have all of them. <laughs> you know, my husband's like, we got rid of cable to save money and now you keep applying to all, you know, you keep subscribing to yep. all of these different things. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The next theory is the matrix or glitch or there's another word for it theory. I'll come across mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So the glitch theory describes deja vu as a momentary breakdown in our reality. And this is what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Einstein said that there is no such thing as time. Time is a human construct. And we made it to establish order and structure because there is none. I have shouted this to the rooftops, okay? Mm -hmm. When I was studying astronomy, us as humans have a lot of questions, correct? Mm -hmm. And I am calling this right now. This was my idea, my whole idea, and you cannot use it, period. <laughs> <laughs> because I have shouted this from the rooftops that all of our answers do not lie in time. We, in astronomy, try to shrink down and say, this is a, my such a small example, but uh, that planet, that exoplanet outside of our solar system is 400 light years away, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we dumb down light years into, so if you move at the speed of light. Into time, and, yeah. Uh -huh, you, if you move at the speed of light, then you will get to that other planet in 400 years if you move at the speed of light, which we do not. So right. I have always said and shouted to the rooftops that every single solution to all of our questions, such as um, the theory you were talking about earlier, you know, like quantum theory, everything, we mm -hmm. do not need to be including time. As a factor. As a factor, because mm -hmm. time is a human construct. And nobody ever listened to me. Well, and Einstein I, said it. And so I needed to sit down and have a conversation with Einstein because yep. nobody ever listened to me. And people were like, well, well then how are you going to figure that out with time? And I was like, obviously, I don't know. Right. Okay. Other parallel Wren, she's got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to her. Go, go parallel Wren. Go, par go PW. PW. Parallel w. Wren. <laughs> I, P R. Parallel River is like at a bar somewhere drinking. Yeah. <laughs> PW's doing things and River's and drinking. PR is drinking. Just like, we love life, peace, man. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, however, this discussion about time, um, time might simply be an illusion, which deja vu gives us, from which deja vu gives us a small break. So okay. time, this human construct of time is going along and deja vu is a break in what we perceive as time. Because okay. like you said, there may not be time, time as I, we, I mean, as humans as we, think about it. I mean, because when you think about our time, it's just our time around our, our one star in the multi freaking universe of mm -hmm. millions gajillions of other stars it's just yeah. our time frame around our sun our star and our solar system and the speed that we move at it has yeah. nothing to do with anything if, else in our universe if time is a made-up convention then what we believe to be past present and future are actually happening all at Happening all, at all at the same, same time. time everything is happening all at the same time so deja vu i mean makes sense then because mm -hmm. all of these things are happening all at the same time and when deja vu occurs we're simply slipping into a greater level of consciousness where we're able to live more than one experience at a time you know mm -hmm. our our minds are high enough at, at that particular point in time to conceive of all the different timelines and that kind of thing, time mm -hmm. as a reality. Um, the theory has wider implications too. So if 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 deja vu is a glitch in our reality, then does that mean that there's damage happening every time in our universe, every time that we someone has an experience of deja vu? Hmm. And there are some people who believe that, yeah, they say that these moments 
are moments when UFOs are sighted because deja vu actually opens up a physical reality bridge between different realities. And so we're seeing, yeah, different things in different realities. Now, the the Matrix movies, which is where all of this really stems from, the glitch theory. Mm -hmm. Trinity, and have you watched The Matrix? Uh, uh, once a long time ago. (laughs) Oh my God. They are brilliant. I like to watch them over and over. It's Mm -hmm. an interesting concept, but anyway, Trinity tells Neo, who is Keanu Reeves, that deja vu is a glitch in the matrix, the simulated reality that keeps humanity unaware that these intelligent machines are actually taking over the world and they're using our energy to, okay. As their energy. Now, I don't know if you talk about this in a sub sub section. <laughs> Simulation. Mm-hmm. That's the other term. About... That's okay. the other word for this theory, the simulation theory. The glitch, matrix, simulation okay. are all... You lose me at matrix because my brain hurts. Okay. Okay. But simulation, I do believe some part of me believes we're in a simulation. Well, okay, this is going to sound really weird, and I've never told this to, I don't know that I've told this to anybody before. I'm going to tell all of you all, listeners and Ren, I kind of believe that we were created by computer something, and they created, just like we are now trying to strive to create AI, Mm -hmm. and that's our goal is to try to get better and better artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. We biological things were created by intelligence that is computerized. And they're like, wouldn't it be cool if these biological things could do this and let's test it out and see. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of feel like that's where we are because we are now mimicking. We are trying to create our creators. If that were like a full circle. Yeah. Yeah, I like that because I, then I have that, never that said that out loud stops. before. But it's very interesting. No, I I think I think about the simulation a lot, and I like to blame it a lot for what happens in my life. <laughs> because I mean, whatever's are, controlling my life is not a very not doing a very good job. Okay, there, there are so many things out there. Like you know, I I love to follow those things on. Um, Facebook and Reddit and all of that, where they show glitches and then, you know, you'll see someone who looks exactly like each other wearing the exact same shirt on the exact same bus. And you're Uh like, how is this not, they don't know each other. Nope. And then have you happened to be there? Have you seen those glitches in the like matrix or simulation, as you would say, where, Mm -hmm. uh, and there's multiple of these, not just one instance, but thousands of instances where, um, you know, you lose something or something. So I'm going to give you two examples that I saw on one on TikTok, two on two on TikTok. I don't know. One was this girl. She was going through her closet. You know, you know, you have a shoe bin if you have a shoe bin right. or, you know, and you're digging through the shoe bin trying to find your shoes. So you find one one foot worth of shoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. One foot wor- wear worth of shoe. And then you're digging through the bin. And she found the exact same, like, let's say it was a left foot. She found two left, but no right. Oh, weird. And it was the exact same shoe. It looked the exact same. It had the exact same wear and tear, like, That's down to, like, the speck of dirt in the bo- in the sole of the shoe. And it was the exact same. It was the left, but she couldn't find her right. Now, there's another example where this woman, this girl, she was doing homework, jamming out mm-hmm. on iTunes. On IT- on headphones, her little mm-hmm. ear pods, iPod, mm-hmm. I, what are they called? The iPhone ones. I Air, AirPods. AirPods. Yes. So she was jamming out on her AirPods. She didn't have her right one in. She goes to grab her right one. And it's empty or something like that. Okay. And she's like, where is it? Where is it? She's trying to find her, you know, her, uh, you know, she tries to do it and everything. She's looking on the bed. She pulls up another set of AirPods and she prefaces with, I'm poor. I, I didn't don't even pay. Have yeah, shit. I, I don't even, have was, any AirPods. Yeah, she was like, I didn't even pay for these first ones because they were a gift, right? So uh-huh. where did she get two? She opened the second one, had her right one in it. That is freaky. 
and it connected like normal. And it, what she said was even freakier was she named it something specific. Like she named on her phone, like her iPod, her AirPod pair, right? She yeah. named it something like Bruce, like something funny. Cause it was like inside joke with herself. And okay. that one's name was also Bruce. So now that she has two, two sets Bruce's. of Bruce's, but only <gasps> one set of ears. She had two cases but only one set of ears because one had her left one in it and she and the other had her right. See, I don't know. I mean, that could be parallel so universe that was, where she that crossed could be. over. It could or be, it but could it's be a also glitch. a glitch. It could Are we been run a glitch. by aliens or aliens like. OK, so aliens rem- makes me think of the men in black movies. If you watch yeah. those. Yeah, I've seen. So, those. No, and, but like, sorry, I'm still on the. But, like, I also think, like, we're having so many glitches and everything now because whoever is in control, quote, unquote, whoever, you know, whatever it may be, is getting either lazy. Or they don't want to deal with us anymore. We're, <laughs> like, we're getting, like, quote, unquote, too advanced. And, it, like, you know. Are we, though? I don't know. And then I also like to, I like to say to my husband, all the, I, I dissociate a lot. Like, I zone out a lot. Okay. Okay. So I like to tell him, sorry, I was having an NPC moment. <laughs> <laughs> I because, like that. Like, I like to think like me. Well, he's a big gamer, so he I'm would a, love that too. Yeah. yeah. I, I like to think, you know, maybe I'm the different one and I don't have anyone controlling me. And I'm the I'm the one who's an NPC gone intelligent and wild. And so sometimes I still have my NPC moments where I zone out and I'm an NPC. What was that just, movie with Ryan Reynolds? Where he was the oh, NPC that bad guy, good guy, or good guy. That Something was so like good. That. that one was good, mm-hmm. but not like that. But just like in a way where, yeah, I think where you it, you are the one that that realizes that something is not. Something's but there's wrong. A, there are a lot there's of there's a lot of people mm-hmm. that think this. So yeah. if if it really is going on, I don't know. But the Men in Black movies. You know, they use those flashy things, what, yeah. neuralizers or something, and they would make people forget that they had seen aliens. And um, the actor, he was like, but what if they remember something? And the other guy was like, oh, it won't matter. They'll just think it's deja vu. And uh-huh. I thought, that's pretty appropriate for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, so maybe we're all being, you know zoned out and what what was it in the harry potter not harry potter movies but the the ones that come after the creature movies where Ugh. they would make you forget all the humans for forget same type of thing where you might mm-hmm. have this you know inclination that something happened and then you just kind of write it off as oh yeah it was deja yeah. vu yeah yeah what if our deja vu, I don't know if you get into this, what if our deja vu is that like a moment where our memories are erased, but the aliens had to come down and reprogram us or something. So it's like we're See? frozen in time for a second. And then, and then all of a sudden we're like, oh, wait a second, you know, could be, could be <laughs> um, the expression, a glitch in the matrix actually entered our lexicon over the past two decades to mean anything that seems like it couldn't possibly be real including eerie coincidences, deeply unlikely occurrences, and any incident that seems to defy logic. Okay. So in the Matrix movie, Deja Vu is explained as the code of the Matrix rewriting itself, resulting in a momentary momentary glitch. Mm -hmm. So Neo, in the scene of the movie, if you all have watched the movie, he sees the, the black cat walking across the doorway and he sees it mm-hmm. twice and that's a clue that something around him is being reshaped in real time hmm. so we see things like this but we always say oh we just didn't see it right we write it off yeah yeah i was and, too t- tired you know yeah that can't be what i saw you know yeah. we'll hear noises and our intuition is telling us something's up and we listen and we're like oh it was just and we write it off okay you know what pissed me off growing up my parents always said any weird creak in the house oh it's just the house settling what the fuck (laughs) does that mean what does that mean is it getting up on its little chicken legs and walking like it's not the house settling it's not going anywhere (laughs) baba yaga yeah so like like any noise could be anything but like my parents were always like that 
your house was like on some kind of Indian burial ground or something? Yeah, it's something like that. And I mean, we have some like even my sisters have this thing where we all have some common story to be told about two of the rooms in the house of like where we all had weird. It's see, okay. I always read these stories where like nobody told anybody. And I'm like, why do you not say anything? Well, well you well, said, my, you said. Yeah, with my sisters, it, I mean, we're like, we're older now. Like we're well into our twenties. One of my sisters, she's 30. So like she, like we all sit down, we're all having like family game night. We know we finally get to sit and chat. And I'm Sounds like, yeah, I had, I had this weird like experience where this thing touched my face when I was trying to fall asleep in my room, which used to be both of my sister's rooms. And they were like, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Why I wouldn't told- you all have said this when you all were little to each other? I don't know. But my sister was like, yeah, no. Because when um she was younger and in that room, she would hear breathing come out from underneath the bed. Like breathing, like heavy. Oh, my God. You know, breathing. And she said once like her parents, her parents, our parents got a cat and the cat slept with her in that room. Like the breathing stopped. And it's the same room that I had some something. And I felt the fingers touch my face you know like it was like there was like crawling over my face and then my other sister i don't think she ever had an experience in that room but in another room she had an an experience where something was like she knew something was there so she wanted to contact it somehow anyways but it was it's like one of those instances where we all had similar stories and we never told anybody because who you got what do you want i guess you didn't want to seem crazy right but that wasn't even the reason I didn't say anything. It was just, I don't know. But anyways. Okay. Yeah, so, so like yeah. in the movie, Neo sees the cat walk across yeah, the doorway yeah, yeah. twice. And we see stuff like that. We just write it off. But the simulation theory posits that reality might not actually be real, but instead be an illusion of which we are unaware mm-hmm. and and which we could possibly reawaken, which that leads to danger. So there was an actual murder case in real oh. life uh-huh. where Joshua Cook, he says that he watched The Matrix and he also was in a home that was abusive. He had okay. a, a, abusive stuff going on and uh-huh. he also had mental illness. Uh-huh. And so he murdered his adoptive parents because he was trying to figure out whether he was living in a matrix or not. Oh, and he said it it messed me up really bad because it wasn't like the movie The Matrix. It was horrific and it uh-huh. jarred me. He was 19 years old and he killed his adoptive parents with a 12 gauge shotgun. And this was in Virginia. And then he pleaded guilty because mm-hmm. he was and he was sentenced to 40 years in, in jail. But his whole thought process was I this world isn't real. Mm hmm. And so I guess he thought that if he killed his parents, that it he would wake up like Neo did in the Matrix movies. Mm-hmm. But it didn't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know. Crazy. So the, the it, yeah. very interesting but dangerous theory. Very. Yeah. So I mean, the, I could I could see if he had a mental illness, some something happened abusive wise. Yeah. Like, see, I feel like a lot of people that are are ascribed as having mental illness might just see things that the rest of us don't see. Yeah, something different. Yeah. But I mean, we are as humans biologically are limited. I mean, our vision is limited to a certain spectrum. Our mm-hmm. hearing is limited to a certain spectrum. Yeah. But what if these people that quote have mental illnesses are able to see beyond, you know, they just have DNA that allows them to see or hear a different spectrum than we see. Uh-huh. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. So the they're next, they're half alien. <laughs> they could be alien. They could be from another universe. It could uh-huh. be, you know, the CERN Something. thing that created merged universes. Yeah. Yeah. So the next theory is precognition theory. And this is where it's like, they think that deja vu is, a portent to tell the future and a a precognitive dream is where we dream something that is happens in the future. 
okay. someone finds themselves in a situation that they've dreamed about. And this okay. could ex- this could explain deja vu by suggesting that the moment we have uh, experienced living is something that we've previously dreamed, and that's why it's familiar. So say you have a dream about driving on a certain road, and then later you're driving on that road, and you have this precognitive recollection of the road that allows you to recognize it. Okay, so the theory is based on the idea that your subconscious mind is not confined by space or time. Deja vu Deja vu is then explained as something that your mind psychically foresees before you physically experience it. Mm-hmm. So it's like you saw the future. Okay. So when you have the moment of deja vu, your mind treats it as a memory and then you're it's going like, wait, I've I've been here before. And some witches feel that this is a gift. There is one witch who claims to experience deja vu two or three times a week, which makes me wonder, is she between the age of 15 and 25? Yeah, you know, I, I wonder, know. I yeah. wonder how old she is because does it decline? Like, See, I know, just don't think that deja vu would happen more between the ages of 15 or 25. Yeah. Like, I think you can get it whenever. Like, I don't know. Because if we're but, talking about universes and blah, 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 and all those many factors, like, why would it only happen to young people? Yeah, that makes no sense. Except you for, know. you know, there is the theory that young people can see things that older people get too disillusioned to be able to see. I, I don't That's know. That's true. Um, so she was advised by another witch that she had a gift. And then another witch claimed that deja vu is a sign of of being a witch. If you have deja vu, then you that's a sign that you might be a witch. Mm-hmm. And some para paranormalists insist it's precognition and still others point to a connection to past life, which we talked about already. Yeah. So as often I do, I went to Reddit. Reddit is a font of amazing information. Uh-huh. One, one Redditor said that for her, deja vu is a premonition. She says, like, I've lived it before, and I know what's going to happen before it happens. And for others, it's different. But I was blessed with having it as a gift of knowing the unknown. Hmm. So that's how she perceives her gift is, you know, she has deja vu. She, it then comes to pass. And to her, it is a precognition. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here, here's another story from Reddit. Reddit has lots of good stories. You should go and Google this for sure. Uh, but be prepared to spend a day or two or three reading <laughs> all this stuff because it is fascinating. Uh-huh. All right. So this person says, I don't know if this is deja vu or if there's another term for it, but I was probably 13 or 14 at the time. I was in my room, sitting at my desk, doing homework and eating my dinner, which I had about half finished. I hear a knock at my door. I told whoever it was to come in. It was my mom holding my dinner. This made me very confused because, as I said, I'd just been eating my dinner. I say that to my mom, and she points out that she just finished making dinner and that there's no food on my desk. I look down, and my dinner has disappeared. To this day, I have no explanation for this. Were they still full? Yeah, good question. And then precognitive dreaming is having a dream that later comes true. And I believe we did a dream episode. I'm almost positive we did. And we talked about a better way to remember your dreams is to to do dream journaling. So Mm -hmm. this might be something you might want to do to see if maybe you're having precognitive dreaming or not. You know, keep a dream journal. Wake up. The first thing you do is roll over, pull out that notebook and start writing. Because yeah. otherwise we forget about it as as life sets in. Yeah. Recently I've been dreaming and I haven't been able to remember, you know. Yeah. And throughout the day I'm like, oh yeah, I had a dream about that. So a notebook would be nice. Yeah. Some some things do remind you of, oh yeah, I had a dream about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So related to deja vu is deja vu, which is a much more intense feeling that you've lived through a moment moment before, but it doesn't end mm. there. In an episode of Deja Vecu, you feel like you can predict what's going to happen next. 
And in in unexplicable cases, you can. This is my friend that I was telling you about. Yeah, I was about to ask. Yeah, She knows. So she'll have a sense of deja vu and she'll be like, oh, so this is going to happen. And it does. And then this is going to happen. That reminds me of that Supernatural episode where um, Sam dies and Dean is going through the same day over and over and over again. And he's like, you know, she's going to drop the ketchup and all this. But that's how oh, my wait, friend. Wait. I think it was Dean dies. And Sam and is Sam, the one. Yeah, I Sam's could be. the one. Because I've watched that episode a lot. That is my a favorite. That's one of my favorite ones. Supernatural mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. But my friend has that. Where she will feel it, it's more than just deja vu that goes away in a minute. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, I've been here. He's going to drop his fork and he drops his fork. Mm-hmm. But it, it doesn't do her any good. She's like, if I could just make money on this, you know. But <laughs> yeah, it do honestly. Because yeah. she realizes it as it's happening. It doesn't help yeah. her ahead of time. Yeah, but it, it is very fascinating, and some pro- some people believe that this is proof that déjà vu and and déjà vécu are evidence of clairvoyance or precognition, which maybe she does have. Maybe she mm-hmm. has that gift and hasn't explored it. Maybe she should yeah. explore that. Yeah. So I found a Quora story, which Quora is always interesting. Mm-hmm. And it says, I was a 13 year, I was 13 years old and at a sleepaway camp for the first time. I was kind of getting homesick and I had a terrible time sleeping. So one dream I remember was a dream about two girls that had something really bad happen. And I don't remember what it was. And they were scared and they stayed in a house together. And then I woke up and went to breakfast the next day. And I noticed there was an officer there wearing a bulletproof vest, a helmet, and he had a gun. Oh, gosh. Yeah. When breakfast was over, I asked one of my leaders why that man was there. And she replied that two girls had had something bad happen to them and had been placed in the summer camp in a house all to themselves. It totally freaked me out. I've never mentioned it to anyone else besides now. Wow. Creepy, right? Yeah. All right. Another Quora story. I was about 28 and I traveled to Johannesburg from London to visit my grandmother and friends, having immigrated a year earlier. I had good mates living in Johannesburg and called one of them up to who enjoyed partying. Oh, let's call him X. X implored me to come along as there would be some cute girls and they would be driving to meet their meet a bunch of other mates for a night out. While talking to him on the phone, a vision, like a deja vu experience, of a VW Golf, which is apparently a car, which we don't it is. have. It's a, it's a type of, yeah, we do. We have them here in the U.S.? Yeah. Never heard of it. Okay, so yeah. a VW Golf came out of nowhere, and in my vision, I saw people hurt in the Golf. The, the car had a serious accident in my vision. The people were maimed, crushed badly, and hurt, including my, my mate, this guy, X. I decided not to go to the party and just had a quiet night. I went to Mm -hmm. bed early with a bit of a FOMO, fear of missing out, but decided, hey, there's another night. So when I I was awoken by a phone call, my mate X had been in a massive car accident. Oh, gosh. His, His hip was broken and the girls in the car and his best mate were also very badly hurt. That morning, I rushed to the hospital to see them. He was in a bad way and on morphine and he was wrapped in a cast all the way from his legs to his hip. His mate, Y, was too badly damaged, broken bones, and the girls too, and it took years to get them right. Years later, I told them the reason I didn't join them for the night out, and the scary thing, when I discussed it, I said, was the car a VW Golf? And they said yes. Oh, gosh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if I had a a quote-unquote vision deja vu moment like that i'd be like hey i'm not going but by the way but, drive safe but, you know but how often do we we write these things off we're just like oh yeah it's but nothing. it's also like just drive safe and you know take it we, slow or i think we need like our intuition talk we need to yeah. t- pay more attention to those gut reactions yeah and not worry about people saying well you're crazy you know because if it doesn't happen great but if it does happen you've saved somebody right Uh Uh uh-huh wow so he this particular person that talked about the vw golf Mm -hmm. had several that he posted 
I mean, oh, crazy. Wow. So, so he's got a gift. I think he mm-hmm. one of his was. A, a personal experience where he bet on uh, horses at a, at a race mm-hmm. and, you know, people were making fun of him for picking this one. And he's like, but he had this deja vu moment. And he's like, no, I want to pick this one to win. And he won the trifecta. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wish, I wish that would work for me, but me too. That, <laughs> that didn't work for me. <laughs> no, <laughs> but he, yeah, he said he won 2000 bucks. So um, another Redditor says, we do live each life somehow indefinitely repeating. Th- this is their theory. Mm-hmm. Have you ever noticed how there are people in the world that look just like you, almost as if they are you in the same gene pool, but not really? And we talked about this in our doppelganger app episode. Yes, but like I have never seen a person that looks like me. Yet. I don't want to. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. But like, so, no, I'm serious, though. I've never seen a person that looks similar or like me in any way. He he says, look, you look the same. You have the same interest and mindsets, you know, like the celebrity lookalikes that we see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What if there are cosmic bowls that had each group of these same looking people and that they're just you, which is like that egg story that is on our blog that I, I, I always come back to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy. What if, what if, you know, you're se- these same looking people are just you in another life. Hmm. So basically deja vu is just you and another self. But where's, theory. where's my other self then? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. And are we just like in the egg? Are we just ourselves living at the same time over and over and over again to learn yeah. whatever lesson it is that we're supposed to learn? Yeah, I don't know. Which could be the same thing for the matrix theory. Are we here until we learn what we're supposed to learn by these controllers who are controlling yeah. the matrix? I don't I know. Don't know. Right. And I mean, we are way, way late. This one's going to run really long. And I haven't even gotten to the scientific definitions, which mm-hmm. those, uh, interestingly enough, has not been proven either. So it's not like I can say, oh, but science says this is all junk. Yeah, I mean, X, y, and most, a lot of science is, oh, it's just a theory, you know. Yeah, the science is just a theory as well. So, um, you know, they say basically our brains are having a moment, kind of like a brain fart. Uh, is basically mm. what you know brain uh, machine de- deja vu <laughs> yeah. is but uh it's really more sciencey than that they they say that there's something about us being um biological beings that is the reason for deja vu mm-hmm. um it's hard to study because obviously you yeah. don't know who's going to have deja vu and when so yeah, it's not no, like yeah, what moment a, yeah um, one scientific theory is that deja vu is your brain creating a, an illusion. This is thought to happen when there's a bit of miscommunication between two parts in your brain. Mm-hmm. Deja vu is also supposedly caused by dysfunctional connections between those parts in your brain that play a role in memory and familiarity, and they get confused. So you're yeah. in a familiar situation and your brain is like, oh, we know this. And they they try to input what they think they know into what we're actually seeing. That feels I, right. I, I kind of like the like uh, that one. fantastical theories better. Yeah, you know, yeah. Parallel universes and stuff. But what about science, you guys? The science part of me likes that one. <laughs> See, I mean, and, and that makes sense. You know, they're like, yeah. oh, no, it's just a biological function, which maybe yeah. it is. Maybe it could be, but maybe but, it's not. What do you guys think? Have you all yeah. had any pair, any of these deja vu, deja vu, deja vu <laughs> experiences? Let us know. Tell us what mm-hmm. you think. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. I'm sorry this ran long, but it's so fascinating. It is you, very fascinating. I could it, talk about this for a lot longer. Hours and hours. <laughs> uh, you can find us at www.c3witchypodcast.com. Pretty much you can find everything there. Our links to our episodes, links to our social media, links to our merch, our monthly newsletters, and more. If you enjoyed this podcast, please support us. You can support us either through Patreon or through Buzzsprout, two different ways, two different types of things. Go to our website to see what the two differences are. Um, Any amount that you can give is greatly appreciated. 
Thank you to the supporters we have already. You guys are fantastic. You are yes. wonderful. Very we cannot, wonderful. We, we cannot do this without you. Mm-mm. So thank you many, 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 many times. Uh, don't forget to check out my store, www.batsandbobblesinc.etsy.com. I promise I will be adding new stuff soon. And thank you all for buying stuff. I have, I know I'm running low on inventory and stock. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back. And until yeah. then, <laughs> stay witchy. Woo!